Hi there, and welcome back to the podcast. It's Matt Walker here, and I am pleased to tell you that it's not your fault. Now, this is not me trying to lead a class in uh, self-compassion. I'm talking about when you go to bed and when you wake up. Or I should say when you would like to go to bed and when you would like to wake up, rather than when society demands that you wake up. Because the consequences of not sleeping in harmony with your biology are many, some of them are serious, and most of them you will be unaware of. Today is going to be the first of a three-part series all about your chronotype. In the first episode, we're going to understand what chronotypes are and how you can better understand which type you are. In the second episode, we'll then speak all about knowing why your chronotype is so important and some of the dangers of railing against your chronotype. And then in the third episode, we'll discuss whether or not you can, for example, change a night owl into a morning lark. And if so, by how much? The quick answer is kind of, sort of, ish. But we will get to that. At a fundamental level, there are three main flavors of chronotypes. About a third of the population are morning types, a third evening types, and the rest sit somewhere in between. I should also note that sleep science has split this into an even more fine-grained five-category system where we have extreme morning types who would want to go to bed as early as 7 p.m. in the evening, then morning types, then the neutrals, then we have evening types, and then extreme evening types who would, for example, wish to be going to bed as late as 4 a.m. in the morning. But for this conversation, those three main buckets will do just fine. I should also note that sex matters. Um, <laughs> now, I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that, but what I mean here is that on average, men are more evening types than women, with men wishing to go to bed around 30 minutes later in the evening and wake up 30 minutes later. So same-sex partners can rejoice in their better alignment. But I should also note, by the way, that this difference between men and women is only there up until about the age of 40. After that, men and women are, on average, mostly alike in their timing. Now, you may have already put yourself into one of these three chronotype buckets, but you may want to pause and check. And it turns out that it's easy to do. There is a questionnaire that you can fill out online. It's called the Morningness Eveningness Questionnaire, or the MEQ for short. And it takes less than about five minutes to complete, and you can just Google that. But there is a less precise yet quick single question that I can ask you that will get us pretty close. And it's the following. If you were on a desert island with nothing to wake up for, no other people around, what time would you ideally like to go to bed? And what time do you think you would ideally want to wake up? And that will get you pretty close to what type of chronotype you are, which of those three buckets that you belong in. Now, it's important to understand the difference between chronotype and your circadian rhythm. In our last episode, we spoke all about your 24-hour circadian rhythm. And all of us have this unyielding 24-hour rhythmic pattern. That's not what's different between chronotypes. Instead, your chronotype determines where the peak of your daytime alertness will arrive and where the trough or the lull of your sleep phase will arrive. This is what's different from one chronotype to the next. Where you sit in terms of your 24-hour circadian rhythm, this is what's different from one chronotype to the next. Where you sit in terms of your circadian rhythm placed on the 24-hour clock. Now, before I go any further, I should probably state for the record what type I am, lest you think that my words in the next couple of episodes are clouded by any bias. 
and I will come right back to that in just a second. The partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. What is Athletic Greens, by the way? It's a nutrition drink, and it contains a whole constellation of antioxidants, biotics, minerals, essential vitamins. It's a very long list when you look at the packet, but I think you get the comprehensive picture. Now, I've never been interested in fads or quick fixes when it comes to diets, and that's not what Athletic Greens is about. I've been using Athletic Greens for a couple of years now, um, <laughs> and just a note, I do buy it myself. Uh, I'm not interested in the idea of freebies for all of the obvious trappings, but I have been using it for two key reasons. First, I take my health pretty seriously, and I always want a full coverage insurance policy when it comes to nutrition, and that's even when I am eating a full and a balanced diet. Second, I did my research on the science behind the ingredients, and I really do place a very high priority on scientific data as ground truth. So if any of this sounds like it's something that you would want to try, just go over to athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, and you will get money off your first purchase as all of these things go. Also, if you do use that link, which is athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, they have kindly offered a free one year supply of vitamin D for a whole year. And they're also going to give away five free travel packs of Athletic Greens with your first purchase. So head on over to that link, um, athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker. And thanks just for listening to these ads and engaging with them. They really do help support the podcast and what I'm trying to do here. So let's get back to the podcast. As for me, and as with all other aspects of my plebeian character, my chronotype is vanilla. I sit right in the middle. I'm neither a strong morning type nor strong evening type. And at this stage of life, uh, <laughs> and let's say I am solidly entering the foothills of middle age. My bedtime is around 10.30 p.m. And you'll often find me waking up naturally a little before my alarm, which is set for 7.04 a.m. And 7.04, because um, why not be idiosyncratic, I say. But let's get back to the story of chronotypes. Evening types will have, on average, a two-hour delay in when their bodies biologically will want to wake up relative to morning types. And their body drop in temperature, which is critical for sleep, is also delayed by about two hours in the evening relative to morning types. We also know that evening types must wait at least an hour longer in the morning relative to morning types before they release key hormones that help them manage stress and emotions upon awakening. And as a result, you cannot and you should not expect night owls to operate with the same good grace and emotional intelligence at an early morning hour. It's simply hormonally unfair and unjust. It would be the converse equivalent of expecting a morning type to be wide awake and not cranky or moody at midnight or 1 a.m. in the morning. That's the difference that we're talking about here. Now, as I said at the start, it's not your fault, and it isn't. Your chronotype is strongly determined by your genes, and therefore, it's somewhat hardwired at birth. In other words, your chronotype fate is genetically predetermined and deep-rooted to a degree. So far, we've discovered at least nine different genes that contribute to your morningness or eveningness preference. The majority of these genes effectively count out time, this sort of tick-tock, tick-tock instructing of your snowflake-like specific 24-hour rhythm. In other words, the very DNA nucleic alphabet that spells out who you are includes who you are 
when it comes to your sleep preferences. Now, I will save you guessing the category names of these genes, but they include what we call the clock genes and the period genes. Now, they, of course, are explanatory in their rhythmic name and how they work in terms of timing, but I think they are rather bland in terms of their naming, don't you think? Especially considering that genes in other fields have names such as Sonic the Hedgehog and the Cheap Date gene. Um, I kid you not, the latter gene has been identified in fruit flies. And those fruit flies with that particular gene are very, very sensitive to the effects of alcohol. Um, <laughs> I think I may actually have that gene. Other genes include names such as the Swiss cheese gene, the boss gene, the brainiac gene, and drum roll, the Ken and Barbie gene. I promise you, these are actual names of dreams. I think that's a great example of when us scientists try to get ultra daring and sort of crazy. That's the best way that we can cut loose. So coming back to it, this is your chronotype. And when you or when society forces you to sleep in opposition to your chronotype, unfortunate things can happen. And that's what we'll discuss in the next episode. And I just want to make clear that I'm not a medical doctor and None of the content in this podcast should be considered as medical advice in any way, shape, or form, and nor prescriptive in any way. So for now, I will simply say thank you again for listening, and I will see you in that next episode. Take care and goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.